6.4 is transformations of trigonometric functions. And again, this is something that you did in grade 11. So we're going to, I'm going to go over it carefully, but if you, if you find you, you need a little more review, you can look back at the transformations um, in trig in the functions 11 course. So basically we're dealing with the same transformations that you've used over and over again to various parent functions. So you have a, a function, k, x minus d, plus c. So if we apply that to the sine function, this is what it would look like. And if we applied it to the cosine function, it would look like this. Now you must always remember the k must be factored out of these two terms if it hasn't been. And that's one little step that so many students get tripped up on. Don't forget, isolate the k, okay, factor it out. Okay, so let's talk about changes to the y-coordinate first. The y-coordinate is the easiest one. If I was going to do a mapping rule, what would I do to my y's? You'd say, well, y is going to be um, multiplied by a, and then we add c. So we get a y plus c. Now, do you remember what the a does? Of course you do. a means vertical stretch or compression, right? So it's a vertical stretch if a is greater than one. So if a is greater than one, and this is affecting, let's write this in, in a color so you've got this. This is an amplitude for my graph, right? The a value is amplitude in this for trig functions. So if you have, you have a vertical compression, and you know what that looks like, that means we're going to make a between zero and one. Everyone else says, well, what about the negative? The negative means a reflection, right? So that comes in another section here. So we have a stretch or it could be a compression or a third, we can have a negative. Negative A means reflection about. Now remember, if you have trouble remembering which one, you're affecting Y's. So the Y's are going up and down this way. So it's reflection about the X axis. Okay, so we have negative and positive sine and cosine functions, and we're going to take a quick look at that in a minute as well. Okay, so what does the um, C do? So C is your vertical shift up or down C units. So in terms of our functions, our trigonometric functions, let me just write this down so I don't make a mistake, vertical shift up or down C units, C units, and that's affecting all together now, one, two, three, that's the axis. It tells you where the axis is going to be. So if I have plus five here at the end, your axis is going to be at five, and then you're going to adjust your amplitude from that axis. So amplitude for the A value and the axis. Amplitude and axis. Those are the two important changes to the Y coordinate. So let's take a look now at the X because everything's a little bit different in, um, in trig than it is in other transformations. Changes to the X coordinate. So if I was going to ask for a mapping rule for my X, you'd say I have to do X divided by K divided by KC plus D. So x goes to x over k plus d. So like I said in the grade 11 course, x's are weird. So it's all backwards. It looks like times a k minus a d, but you're going to divide by the k and add d or change the sign here. Okay, so the k is important because it determines the, um, the period of your trigonometric function. So K helps to determine to determine the period period of function. And this is a little calculation that you will need to do, do over and over again because if you remember Y equals sine theta or cos theta has a period of 2 pi. So if I want to know what the period is of y equals sine 2 theta, the period is 2 pi 
over k. Okay, so you have to always divide the period by the k value. So in this case, the k would be 2. Whoops, I should have put a little sign there. So the period would be pi, right? So 2 pi divided by 2, 2 pi over 2, pi. Okay, so um, alternatively, if you had the period, let's say I had um, y equals sine 1 quarter theta, then the period would be 2 pi over 1 quarter. So remember that's 2 pi times 4, which would be 8 pi. So recall now that a 2 here, or a number greater than 1, uh, results in a compression, and the fraction gives you the stretch, right? So if k, if k is greater than 1, then you have a horizontal compression. by 1 over k. So in this case here, we had a compression of 1 half, right? So this one would be compression of 1 half. And this one would be a stretch times 4, right? 1 over this. So if k is between 0 and 1, in other words, a fraction, then it's a horizontal stretch, and that's changing, again, it's changing the period of the function. Horizontal stretch by a factor of 1 over k again. So you have to remember how to divide your fractions, right? Okay, so um, what else do we have left to do here? We need d, right? So we have d tells you this is the horizontal shift left and right horizontal shift left and right d units and i'm going to get up my red pen right now and write don't forget to factor i'll do an example in a minute don't forget to factor okay so the k helps determine the period and this little formula here period is 2 pi over k is very important VIP okay that formula you're going to use that lots to find the period of the function okay let's do an example flip this over and we're going to do um, let's make up a good one for you Get pencil going. So we're going to say y is equal to one half cos x over two minus pi over twelve minus one. Your job is to graph this function. State the transformations. We can state them as we're doing them. Let's figure out what the mapping rule would be first. We could do some key points. We've done that before. So you can either use key points or sometimes you can just eyeball these functions. So it's two kind of different methods, but um, one you might feel more comfortable with than the other, but I'll show you both. Okay, so I have one half cos x over 2 minus pi over 12. So right away I see that I need to factor this. This isn't x, it's x over 2. So I rewrite it, one half cos, big bracket, take out a half, that leaves me with x, and please be careful when you divide minus pi over 12 by a half. What should your answer be? Please don't say pi over 24. It's going to be minus pi over 6 minus 1. Okay, because pi over 12 divided by 1 half is pi over, is 2 pi over 12 or pi over 6. Okay, so be careful when you're dividing fractions. Don't make that mistake. It's it's kind of very sad to be doing that in grade 12 <laughs> for everybody, including your teacher who won't want to even mark it. Okay, so here's my mapping, uh, not my mapping rule, but my transformation, and I'm going to state the mapping rule now. So I'm going to say I take my x's and y's, and what do I do to my 
x's. Well, let's do what you do the y's first. That's always easier one. 1 half y minus 1. 1 half y minus 1. Very easy. Y you should never make a mistake with. And neither should you make a mistake with x because we have 1 half. So we're dividing by half. That means multiplying by 2. So I have 2x's and not minus pi over 6, but plus pi over 6. And there's a beautiful little mapping rule for you to use with some key points of the graph. So I'm transforming a cosine function. So it would probably be a good idea to have some points for the cos function. So I'm going to do x and cos x. So if I did 0 and 1, so I'm using just the basic cosine function here that you should be able to draw very quickly. Let's draw it quickly right over here. So you go mm, like this, starts and ends here. Now remember, this is um, pi over 2 here, pi over, sorry, 2 pi, this is pi, this is pi over 2, and this is 3 pi over 2. Okay, make a quick sketch, and now you have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 points that you can use. So pi over 2 and 0, I have pi and negative 1, I have 3 pi over 2 and 0, and I have 2 pi and 1. Okay, so those were the, these are key points of the parent function, right? Y equal cos theta. That's all. Okay, so I want to do these transformations to these points. So I'm going to do 0, 1 goes to, and I'm going to plug in x is 0 here. So that gives me pi over 6 and a half minus 1 minus 1 half. Okay, and then we're going to do pi over 2 and 0. So pi over 2 times 2 is pi plus pi over 6. That's going to be 7 pi over 6 and minus 1. Okay, so what is our What's our period? Let's do that because that's really a good thing to know here. So period is equal to 2 pi over k. So that's 2 pi over, my k is a half, so that's 4 pi, 4 pi for my period. So I'm stretching it. That's why all these points look like they're so far apart, right? Okay, so pi over 2, let's go to pi and minus 1. So pi, that's 2 pi plus pi over 6. 2 pi is 12 pi over 6. And one more pi gives me 13 pi over 6. And minus 1 here for my y. So minus a half minus 1 is minus 3 halves. And then I have 3 pi over 2 and 0. And that gives me 3 pi over 2 times 2 is 3 pi. That's 18 plus 1 is 19 pi over 6 and 0 gives me minus 1. And finally, I have 2 pi and 1. I transform that. 2 pi here goes 4 pi. 4, that's 24 over 6 plus 1 more is 25 over 6. 25 pi over 6. You can see they're going up by 6s here, right? Pi, 7, 13, 19, 25 probably have done that in your head a little faster. And a half minus one is minus a half. So you can see I've gone from minus half, minus one, minus three halves, minus one, minus a half. So it all looks really very pretty. Okay, so what I want to do now is I want to graph this. So I get up my trusty ruler here quickly. I usually like to have these graphs already done. Now let's take a look first of all where the axis is. Remember, this is your axis right here. Axis. So I'm going to be below. So I'm going to make sure when I draw my graph, I don't have, I'm not going to go off the page here. So I want the axis to be at minus one. So let's call this minus one right here. And I didn't give you a domain, but let's say it's between zero and two pi, which is what we've done. Okay, so this is y equals minus 1. 
we've got our axis down here. Oops, sorry, I guess I couldn't see that. And now I'm going to check out my amplitude. So the amplitude is one half, right? We had one half cos. So I'm going to be going up a half from here. So this is the highest point on my graph. And the lowest point is going to be another half below. This is always a good idea to do this. I mean, it just gives you a little better um, sketch, minus three halves. And you can see all my points go between minus a half and minus three halves. So now I've got, um, I have to go back up here to give me my, my x-axis scale. So I'm going to shift it to the right pi over six, right? So this said pi over six, we shifted it to the right pi over six. So let's say I'd make this two pi here. I'm gonna divide it nicely into quarters, like I mentioned earlier. So this is pi over two. And my whole graph is going to be shifted pi over six to the right. So that means I'm gonna start pi over six. This is pi over two, so I want another. So let's say this is pi over six right here. Pi over six, one, six, two, six, three, six. Yeah, it's about, maybe about here. Okay, so I have pi over six. I'm gonna start my graph there. Now, the other thing you should note is that we have, um, is this a positive cos function? Yeah, it was positive cos. So we're gonna start at the highest point, which is what we are at here. So we're here. And then seven pi over six, that's just pi over six away from pi. And we're at minus one. So that's here. And then 13 pi over six. So we, we have to stretch this, right? Because we're going out four pi. Oops, should have drawn my graph a little bit longer. Okay, so we have pi over six, seven pi over six, two pi is that far, four pi is gonna be this far. Quick sketch. And we're gonna end here at 25 pi over six. My lowest point, this is minus three halves, is going to be at 13 pi over six. 13 pi over six, that's um, two pi plus a sixth. So it's going to be right here, my lowest point. And I guess I should have made this y equals one way over here instead of right in the middle of the graph. This one's going to be at uh, 19 pi over six, so that's three pi plus a little bit. So that's my other minus one point. So if you sketched all this together, you'd have something going like this. Sometimes your graphs are almost flat. Don't be surprised if that happens. Okay, so there's my graph. Now, like I said, you could make these points. This is always a good thing to do. Know some key points, do the transformations. Or you could have just stretched it out by four pi, shifted it all over pi over six, and done everything by quarters. I'm gonna do that in the next example that I'm going to do for you. Okay, so the second one, this is from 8C from your homework. In case your teacher gives it to you, you'll already have it done or at least an idea of how to do it. So this one, they've already factored out the two here. So this is nice, I didn't have to factor it out. And I'm going to, um, I'm going to sketch it just by, just by sketching it. So let's figure out what the period is first. Period, the axis, axis is easy, y equals two, remember right here, right there, staring you right in front. And this is, it's a negative sine function. Now let's go back to the period. So it's two pi over k. And in this case, it's going to be two pi over two, which is pi. So we've compressed it, horizontal compression by a factor of a half. Um, shifted to the left, pi over four. Axis is at y equals two. It's a negative sine function. So quick sketch, here's your positive sine function, right? So this is a negative sine function. So it's going the other way, negative sine theta. Okay, so I'm gonna write that in red here so that you can see you really have four graphs to think about. 
positive and negative cos and sine functions. So it should look like that when I'm done, right? Okay, so let's let's draw it without doing a mapping rule. You can do both if you want. But I'm just going to sketch it like this. Okay, so my axis is at plus two. So first thing you want to do is make a plus two here. So we write that on right away. We've got our axis y equals 2. Now my period is only pi and I'm shifting it to the left pi over 4. So where should I start? To the left pi over 4. So I want to start at minus pi over 4. The period is pi. So that means this is a quarter of a pi. There's another quarter. Here's, oh, I should have made it a little farther apart maybe. So we're only going to pi, right? So here's pi here. Let's call this pi. And from here, here to here, that's half a pi. That's a quarter of a pi. Let me just straighten this up a bit. I've got some red, red ink came through on this. I'm going to move my quarter down just a bit so it looks more exact. Okay, so there's a quarter pi, half pi, three quarters of a pi, pi over, this is pi. But one complete cycle is going to end here. Right? Because from here to here is pi, and my period is pi. Okay, now because I have this y equals 2, and I'm looking at the axis here, the amplitude is 2. So I'm going to go up 2 from that. So this is a B4, and I'm going to go down 2. So this is 2 plus 2, 2 minus 2. Right? That gives me the total amplitude of my function. Uh, not amplitude, but the range. So the amplitude is 2, so I'm starting at a negative sine function. So you always start a sine function on the axis. Don't start it down here. This is your axis here. So you want to start it right here. Okay, start it on your axis. There's another thing I get students that try to put it down here and then they don't know what to do. So I have, this is my maximum height. This is going to be my minimum height, right? So it's a negative sine function. It's starting at minus pi over 4 and it's going to end here. That's one full cycle. If your teacher asks you for two complete cycles, well, then you're just going to draw another cycle afterwards. Cut and paste it. Okay, so... If I go from minus pi over 4 to 3 pi over 4, where is the lowest part on this graph? So 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, right here. Right? This is going to be the lowest. That's the midpoint between the two maximums. And it's going to be right here on the graph. So I'm going from this way, like this it's going negative sign it's going to go oops what did I do wrong here I have to end at the I have to end at 3 pi over 4 and I have to go up and down between them so pi over 4 this is uh, let's see so 3 pi over 4 this is going to be pi over 2 pi over 4 0 so it's going to have to go through here this is going to be my lowest and then it's going to go pi over 4 here my highest point is going to be here so you're dividing it into quarters and back down to here so you have a starting and an end point right this is pi units so go pi over 2 units and that's going to be back on the axis so we have axis 3 points the highest point at pi over 2, the lowest point at 0. And there's your sketch. Now you could keep going here, right? Keep going like this. Depends on how far your teacher wants you to draw it. But you've got... Um, what do I do this for? Okay, so there you go. There's your negative sine 2x pi over 4 plus 2. I've got my axis. I'm up 2, down 2. 
I started on the x-axis, it was negative sine, so I went down first, and there's your negative sine function. Now you could go back and say, let's just write out the mapping rule. I won't do it all for you because it's uh, getting a little long here. But let's say we have x and y go to, what do we do to the x's? So we have x over 2 minus pi over 4 and minus 2y plus 2. That's my y coordinate. See, minus 2y plus 2, this divided by 2, x divided by 2, subtract pi over 4. And then you would use all the key points on the graph of the regular sine theta. So I'll just write them out quickly here. 0, 0, pi over 2 and 1, pi and 0, 3 pi over 2 and minus 1, and 2 pi and 0. So you get all your points and then you apply all these get all the points using these transformations. Okay, so uh, we might as well just finish it here. Minus four pi over four and two, this goes to zero and zero, and then pi over four and two, uh, pi over two and four, and three pi over four and two. So three pi over four and two, so here we go, we're all in the right spot. So you could do, this is using points, key points, key points and mapping rule. And the other one is just kind of eyeballing it. It's not, this one wasn't that hard to do. Sometimes you might want to use this to check it or whatever you have time to do. Okay, so we're going to get into some more of the word problems that are associated with this in um, two more lessons. The next lesson I think is reciprocal trig functions and then there's a lot of modeling so we'll do a lot of uh, a lot of that work then. Okay bye for now.